Howdy folks, it's episode 7 of Bonfire Man. Okay, here's how Bonfire Man works. I'm locked to specific chunks in the game. I have to interact with everything in my unlocked chunks exactly once. So that means every tree needs to be chopped, every enemy needs to die, every resource needs to be consumed. When I interact with something, it is exhausted. When something is exhausted, I'm not allowed to interact with it again. I'm allowed to randomly unlock a new chunk whenever all of the entities in my current chunks have been exhausted. When I enter a new chunk, I rest at a bonfire, as in the Souls games. Resting at a bonfire unexhausts all of the content in previous chunks that I've already been to. Now I have to exhaust all entities in both the new and old chunks to continue to progress. My objective is to unlock every chunk in RuneScape eventually. All minor rules and exceptions can be found in a Google Doc that I'll link in the description of this video. Let's go ahead and get to the playthrough. So last episode we rolled some pretty useless chunks. Uh, the Duel Arena over here and River Lum is useless for now until we can get to the southern part of it. Uh, so not super interesting, but at the end of the episode we rolled Drainer Village, which is absolutely full of content. I'm going to head over to the Fog Wall. We'll walk through it. Uh, later bonfire, respawn everything, and then we'll take a look at what's in Draenor. All right, here we are on the road into Draenor. Let's uh, let's pop inside. Nice. All right, I'm pretty pumped about this. Um, let's go ahead and light the bonfire as always. Can't forget to do that. And then let's rest by spinning. Amazing. Okay, uh, I'm gonna look around. There's a lot of stuff to find here. There's a lot of trees in this chunk, unfortunately. I went ahead and added the tasks in here. Oh yeah, I guess I should mention that I've decided to split out underground chunks. Um, they still unlock automatically when the above ground chunk gets unlocked, but it'd be easier for me to track things like the Drainer Sewers, the Sour Hog Cave, Puro Puro. Oh god, there's a jail guard attacking me. Okay, let me get out of here. So one of the things I'm really excited about is just having another bank and having a chunk unlocked that has a bank in it. Uh, it's going to make like chopping all these trees if I choose to hold onto the logs so much better if I don't have to run all the way back to Lumbridge. So having a second bank is a pretty big deal. Let's just review in general. So we've got a Black Knight, two Dark Wizards, an Imp, four Jail Guards, two Market Guards are the new mobs that we can kill. In the sewers, we've got four Skeletons and seven uh, Zombies. I guess there's also some Rats, but not particularly counting those. Uh, we've got a ton of trees, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your perspective. I already have so many trees in uh, the Lumbridge West chunk, or rather the, the Ham Hideout chunk, and I got another 73 on top of them, so we're going to get 99 woodcutting. I think I should probably also state that if we get 99 in a skill, I no longer have to you know, continue to do that skill when we revisit chunks. Um, I can if I need the logs for something, but... Let's just say if we ever hit 99, we don't have to keep doing those tasks. There is a fishing spot here. This is my first ever fishing spot. I don't know that I've ever fished for shrimp here, so I'm actually not sure where it is. Uh, it might be that one on the map just northwest of me or southwest of me. So I might try to do that in a second. There's a master farmer that I obviously can't steal, and we can see the, the spawns. There's a tomato and cheese, uh, both, of, both of which I'm going to want to get every single cycle because they're useful for making certain kinds of food. All right, here are the fishing spots I mentioned. Fishing is going to be a rough skill, an extremely rough skill. Okay, that's the one fish I'm allowed to get. This one, thieving, I think runecraft. There's just a couple skills that you can't really get away with a limited number of, uh, of nodes. But as we have access to more and more of these nodes, it might be more and more reasonable to actually try to fish for stuff. But yeah, I'm going to get 20 fishing XP per cycle. That's, that's, not, that's not a lot. All right, so one thing that's particularly cool are the shops here. Uh, I guess Fortunato has wine, empty jugs. Uh, I guess eventually has vinegar, if I recall correctly, for Rag and Bone Man. I didn't notice these stalls. Oh, dang. Um, okay, I need to check these because these are, these are thieving related. The chunk picker that lists what's in each chunk, it says that these are, are features, but Oh, no, they're listed as NPCs, aren't they? Yeah, give me a second. I got to figure out what the deal is with these stalls. Okay, I went ahead and added the stalls. I guess I just missed those earlier. Um, they're like 22 and 27. I'm not going to be able to do that anytime soon. Uh, but I do want to check out these other shops. So Diango, Diango is an interesting one. He does have 
a hundred teleport cards. Uh, let's see, the Chronicles 300 coins, and each teleport card is 150 coins. I can't really spare this right now. That's like more than 10% of my uh, current wealth for each teleport, but these will be convenient um, because going to the, the Champions Guild, we do have this chunk unlocked, uh, so it could be useful to, to have a port there once money is a little bit easier to come by. I think everything else that he sells is not terribly useful to me right now. I can look at his stock in the wiki really quick just to confirm that, but Olivia's shop is probably the most important one here, and this is I'm probably just going to buy her out, to be honest. Because I think I can afford to buy her out. And then I can just track that she's done. Yeah, I can pretty easily do that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and grab my money, and I'm just going to completely buy out her stock, and I'm not allowed to buy from Olivia again uh, for now. Okay, I've officially bought out her stock. It brought my cash down a bit, but I think it was worth it just to have these. Um, I can plant the barley seeds. Well, I can very soon. I need to rake some patches, but uh, as of this cycle's raking, I'll be able to plant the barley. I'm gonna have to like really baby that because I don't get terribly many more chances if it dies. And I don't think I can protect it. Let me just, what does barley require to protect? Barley seed. Oh, three buckets of compost, okay. So that's a little bit harder. Um, hmm. I don't have access to make compost yet. I might soon, though, if I can get this Falador chunk. It's a couple away. I think that's the closest I can possibly get. Yeah, we want we want that that Falador garden chunk. This is a really important chunk for a lot of reasons. Um, actually being able to farm is one, but also I think if I get this guy and then... I might just need this guy and then a way to connect over to the South River Lum, and then I can do um, Portion of Interest and actually start doing Slayer. But I guess that involves a lot of uh, new chunks to unlock, so probably shouldn't hold my breath on it. I don't know if I'm gonna get compost in the meantime. I might have to just baby the patch and check on it every growth step. Okay, while I'm planning out my day here, I think I wanna go ahead and plant that barley. Go ahead and bring the seeds with me. I'm gonna head over to the hopped patch. Uh, I might try to do some other stuff while I'm there since it's kinda out of the way. But then I'll come back to Drainer once I get all that planted, and we'll start working through the tasks here. Ah, uh, looks like I can buy buckets of compost. They're really expensive. It's 35 coins each. Oh, wait, wait. Let's be careful here. Uh, I can only buy things once, and that includes shop stocks like this one. I guess I've been buying the silk every day because the silk from the Silk Trader in Al-Kharid isn't like a typical shop interface. It's like an infinite stock thing. So I think anything that's an infinite stock shop, you can get... You can do interact with it once per day, basically. However, I do have multiple farming NPCs uh, that I have access to from the multiple patches that I have access to. So I can get a bucket of compost from each one and that will be enough to protect my first plant. Okay, this is uh, super doable. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and rake this guy. I think I can just buy a shovel from the general store, so I'm gonna do that. Yeah, this is gonna get me to level three, which is what I need for barley. Level three farming. Fantastic. Buying a shovel from this shop here. I guess I should go ahead and grab a chisel too. Is there anything else I particularly want here? It does sell bowls. I don't know if the max stock is two, I'd have to check later. But I need, I want more bowls for um, scrambled eggs and the like. Quickly kill this uh, imp. Come on, flower. Uh, blue wizard hat. Okay, I gotta be more careful with this. I have to plant stuff in the patch immediately after weeding it because I can't come back and reweed it once I do it the three times to clear it. So um, I planted these a little bit earlier than I wanted to because I wanted to make sure I had all the compost to pay for protection. So I gotta buy a compost bucket from him and I gotta go grab another one from the bush patch up here. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna come back and pay him to protect it. It's nice that I absolutely need to save all of these weeds every single time because I can only get so many per cycle. I think I'm up to being able to get 12 per cycle now, which is nice. That's almost enough to make some compost. That's done. Let's get this last bucket of compost. 35. God, that's brutal. 100 coins for three compost is not a good deal, but you know, I don't really have another option here. Pay three buckets of compost? Yes. Beautiful. Okay, now I don't have to stress out about that. Thank God. I'll put the notifier on. I don't have to baby the thing. I have my axe, so I guess while I'm up here, I'll try to chop some trees. I don't have to run all the way to the top of this place repeatedly. 
All right, here's 29 defense. We have one more defense level, and we'll swap back over to strength for a while. So I might walk over here. Um, I noticed the Black Knight. There's only one in the chunk, and it. I pulled up the drop table over here, and he does have some cool stuff on his drop table. But uh, I think the Steel Mace might be a flat upgrade to the Steel Dagger because it also now has an attack speed of four. One in 128, though, it's probably not happening. He does have a chance to drop, in addition to checking the, the rear drop table, he can drop the pot of flour at a 1 in 128. So again, not likely, but it's another thing per day that I could do to try to get my gosh darn flour. Uh, so I'm going to try to suit up to kill him real quick. I don't think it's going to be too hard. I might actually use the battle axe since he's the highest level NPC I will have fought by this point. Okay, let's go kill our first Black Knight. That is a task here. Okay, so I am technically able to flinch him behind this tree if I absolutely have to. I'm going to try to avoid that, but I am not hitting him for shit at the moment, so this might be ill-advised. This guy's actually not that bad. Uh, despite being level 33, he hits way less hard than the ham guards most of the time. I think he can hit up to a 4, but I think he's less accurate than the ham guards. I don't know. Certainly less dangerous than the dark wizards. Okay, let's see. Come on. Big money. Big money. Two death runes. That's not big money, but it's not too bad. Okay, Slay Black Knight, complete. 36 Earth Runes from my first Dark Wizard kill. All right, Wizards are down. I'm gonna try to look for this Imp. I think the Jail Guards and the Market Guards are gonna be a pain in the ass. They, they have no drops. I think they only drop uh, Bones, and they're somewhat high level. All right, it looks like the Imp that spawns here spawns right on the zone boundary, so this might be a pain in the ass. I'm gonna try to hop for it. I see it over there, actually. I'm just gonna tag it early so I it stands out a little bit better while I'm hopping. Okay, so um, <laughs> this is, I've been at this for a while. What level would I start on? Up here? I've almost cycled through every world. Amazing, yeah, you can see it over there. Um, so this mode is the very little hopscape. I almost never need to hop. Sometimes I hop to a PVP world so I can bank at the front of Lumbridge instead of climbing up to the top of the castle, but that's about the extent of it. I think that imp, he spawns like right here. Like I think he spawns on the tile that I'm standing on. And I think the way imps work is they, they tend to teleport and once they get past a wall, I think it's just really hard for them to teleport back uh, unbidden. And they certainly won't do it. Um, like they, they're not gonna wander over here because there's no way for them to get back after they've teleported over the wall. So I'm guessing the further we are from patch day, the harder it is to get to this imp. Uh, keep this in mind because I envision this is going to be a hassle from now on. Like, if I ever happen to see this imp uh, in Drainer, I'm going to, like, brag about this exciting imp that I got to kill. It'll be easier, obviously, once I unlock any of these adjacent chunks, so I have a little bit more room to look for it. Um, but yeah, I just saw it teleport, and I, I have zero idea where it went. So I guess I'm going to keep hopping, uh, but this is by far the longest I've had to wait to do anything. Okay, I think I have a solution. I'm going to log in with my main account and just kill this imp to force it to respawn in its proper chunk. Um, I guess that could just as easily happen if another player ran over and killed it, but I, I think the problem is the longer the server is running, because nobody kills, who's gonna kill the one imp in Drainer, right? Like the chance that it teleports across this wall basically approaches 100% over time. And then once it's over here, the chance that it teleports back is very low. It's more likely to get stuck over here. Oh my god, while I was setting up my other account, the imp actually teleported back over and was briefly in this chunk, but I wasn't paying attention and didn't see it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> okay, <laughs> hold on. All right, there's my main account. I'm just gonna head over the chunk boundary and kill this imp if I can find it. I think it, oh, it's all the way over there. It's, I guess you can't see it on that screen. It's all the way over there though. There we go, okay. Okay, this is a solution. So I'm just gonna leave my main account logged out over in Port Serum. Uh, bucket, bummer. That is the most hassle any one of these tasks has been so far. How stupid, I love it. Okay, I'm just gearing up to finish up my other slay tasks in this uh, chunk. So we're gonna kill the market guards. Just confirming, have no drops. Right, so I got the notification that my barley is ready to harvest. Um, I can't plant more than once, so there's really no pressure for me to Harvest. I'm not looking forward to these jail guards. There are four of them. Uh, they're a higher level than the ham guards. They drop nothing. 
and they aggro me, and they're gonna aggro me until I get to attack level 52, or combat level 52, which is gonna take a really long time, so um, they're gonna be hassling me while I'm chopping the trees over here. Are you fucking kidding me? This area is multi-combat? Why? <laughs> Both guards are attacking me there. I was like, what the hell? All right, so now I'm checking out the Draenor sewers. Uh, I don't think these guys have any interesting drops. Uh, well, okay, this one says it's plain. I don't know what the difference is between them. Plain, unarmed, wilderness, stronghold of security. Okay, so I think it's plain, unarmed, or armed. I don't know if that changes their... It does look like it changes their combat level. Okay. Well, I guess we'll know if it's plain, it's only going to drop bones. Oh, it was an easy task, apparently. Huh. Didn't remember that at all. All right, well, that one did drop a bronze med helm, so I'm going to guess it's unarmed. This one has a sword. But let's review the unarmed. Is there anything cool here? Minor rune drops are nice. Herbs are nice, although not relevant for a long time. Copper ore is great. I need those. The armed ones can drop... An Bronze Kite Shield would be an upgrade. It's a 1 in 128, though, and I think there's only two of them that have a weapon. Okay, 18 coins. Cosmic Runes would be pretty hype, actually. Uh, it drops two of them, 1 in 128. But I don't need a lot of Cosmic Runes to be able to do a lot of productive things with um, enchant spells. Namely, like getting a Ring of Forging is going to be pretty important. Uh, I think this is the first time I've gotten access to them, so hopefully I'll get that one of these days. It looks like they also are on the rare drop table, so I'm not expecting to see anything from that, but if we did, like a Dragon Spear drop would be so sick. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not 1 in 699k, yeah, never gonna happen, but that would change everything. Fishing Bait 7 doesn't exactly change everything. All right, seeing the chunk boundary down here gives me an opportunity to talk a little bit about chunks um, in convention. I got this skeleton attacking me. Right, so there's technically two chunks that comprise the drainer sewers. My understanding or my read is that um, chunk man convention is that underground areas are fully unlocked if they're contained in the surface level chunk because trying to keep track of underground chunks is a nightmare. And there's a lot of zones that are clearly intended to be experienced as like one contiguous place but are technically divided into chunks like the Orania ZMI altar for example. So although this is technically multiple chunks we're just going to treat it as a single one and I've picked one arbitrarily for my tracking uh, over here in my task list. We're calling it 009A. I'm technically using chunk 12438 but it also comprises 12439. I want I'll help just let me finish this guy off. I can get gems from that maybe. It despawns I'm gonna be really sad I haven't gotten a random event in a minute. There's 30 defense. Dude, I don't remember how to do any of these random events. I, the last time I did them was probably the first time ever on my main account, and then never since. I got two uncut emeralds. That's uh, pretty decent, actually. The plain skeletons have nothing. The unarmed skeletons have arrows, small amount of runes. Yeah, not a lot exciting here, really. I guess the Iron Ore would be an exciting drop, one in 128. Fire Talisman, somewhat exciting. Rare Drop Table, always exciting, of course. Uh, I'm gonna die, but that's okay, I'll just run back. All right, finished off the last zombie. This is pretty nice, though. Like, all of the enemies down here have interesting drops, and they can all roll the Rare Drop Table, so I'm a little bit excited we're never killing these. It's the opposite of those Jail Guards from earlier. Yeah, so this is presently my only anvil option um, for a true anvil. It might change very easily. I'm within like one chunk of a couple other anvils, but just in case they don't roll, this this might be where I end up having to go. If for some reason I make it past bronze, uh, which is unlikely. But we're done. Um, we don't have to kill the critters we've established. I renamed anything that is a critter to critter from creature, I think. Um, so rats, ducks, spiders pigeons, anything that, that drops nothing, no bones, is optional. And so the sewers are done, and I will go ahead and collapse it here. Jail guards are done too. So I was researching because there's a ton of nettle out here. Um, it turns out nettle tea is actually pretty good. Like, it's pretty decent uh, cooking XP. I probably just use it for cooking XP and then maybe take it to burn on, on killing some enemy that I need to heal on, like ham guards. Um, because it does involve using bowls, and I do get the bowl back, but that's annoying because it's 
taking up inventory space even when I use it to heal. I might end up using uh, Nettle Tea to heal at the bank, right? If I'm like, if I just finish an activity and I go to the bank and I'm not maxed out, I think that would be the, the opportune time to do it. Unfortunately, I'm having this problem I was talking about where I'm getting hassled by this guard while I'm trying to pick these stupid nettles. This is another one where I, I doubt anyone has ever picked all of these nettles before. I'd be curious, like, if we could see, like, a usage graph. I'd love to see, like, how many people have gathered any of these nettles. I know you might want one for certain quests that require nettle tea, but, like, there's so many of them over here, and I might be the only person who's ever given a shit about that. It's great. Part of why I'm loving this game mode, honestly, is because so much about the world design in this game is purely aesthetic and kind of weirdly contrasts with the actual anticipated core loop where you're going to try to find an efficient place to do things, right? Like, there are so many trees in this game that are here just because it looks nice to have a forest and trainer, but there's no expectation that anyone's going to actually chop them, right? And there's no reason really to have more than one nettle spawn over here that would be enough to probably satisfy the entire player pace for all time but there's a few extra ones just because it looks nice and it looking nice is actually really critical to the game being playable for me which is fantastic oh man this was almost problematic for a second i thought the chunk boundary was like a couple over to the left and i couldn't actually get in here to get to the cheese and tomato that's fortunate okay i think i'm gonna start working on chopping down trees i've got all the slaying tasks completed this should be reasonably chill, I hope. I'm specifically not allowed to chop this tree. There's a guard in this tree? What the fuck? I've never noticed that before. Oh my god. Is that supposed to be connected to a... It's not a quest. There's no quest involving that. Wow. Incredible. Okay, well, that's a thing. All right, this XP to level up notification is really good. I should be better about this from now on. Uh, 41 wood cutting. Look at that. Just like a real strimmer. Now chop of the rune axe. Oh man, wouldn't that be cool to get one? I think it's probably possible. I bet there's an early-ish chunk that I'll technically be able to get a rune axe from. We'll see. Interesting problem here. This tree back here, marked it because I was heading over to chop it. I don't think it's actually accessible. I don't think it's possible to get back there. Uh, this is actually something that we were discussing, Game Saucer and I, when like calculating how many trees are in the game world total. If you wanted to do this non-chunk style, if you just wanted to look at the entire game world at once. And it's very difficult to tell which trees are actually accessible. I'm not sure if those are included in the counts for this region. I might have to check that pretty closely. It's really annoying getting harassed by these guards while trying to do this. Because it's better than like if it was dark wizards or something. I guess a somewhat nice feature of the uh, jail guards murdering me is that it's a stamina refill. Because it doesn't require all my stamina to run back from Lumbridge. It's actually pretty close, so... Maybe that's actually not that big of a deal. I was worried that when they attacked you that they would interrupt your woodcutting, because I've, I've never been in a situation where I'm woodcutting around dangerous enemies. Like, why would you, right? Uh, but apparently you can chop away while they're trying to murder you. Okay, I think I've done all the trees in Drainer, which is a lot. It's not quite as many as the number of trees in the ham hideout chunk, but it's pretty close. It's kind of wild that a person who, like loves this game so much because it's basically an idle game and who made a video essay that's three hours long arguing that it's more like Cookie Clicker has decided to do a limited game mode that is completely not AFK at all. Uh, I literally can't stand it in Node for longer than a single XP drop. The closest thing to AFK is a monster kill. And I guess I should say now that all of uh, Drainer wood is chopped, we're done. Just gonna do some cleanup on the remaining chunks which is now getting into the three to four hour range to do. Uh, I don't think there's too much that I can get that can speed this up. You know, having a really high max hit so I one-shot everything, not caring about their bones drop so I don't have to pick them up. Um, potentially maybe being able to train agility a little bit so my run energy comes back faster might help in the future, but uh, these, these chunks are just starting to take a really long time to clear. And so actually being able to clear a chunk and therefore make it optional is looking more and more attractive as we continue. There's woodcutting 42. Still collecting all these potatoes every day. Uh, it's incredibly worth it. I'm the imp in Lumbridge. I'm gonna kill it real quick. I really, I have a feeling that as soon as I unlock pots of flour, I'm gonna get the drop after I no longer need it. Potion? 
I think that's just a flavor item. I don't think that does anything. I don't know if I've seen that drop. Okay, my first time ever harvesting a farming patch. I think in the future I'm going to have to also buy a compost to treat it with so I can get more harvests. And that wasn't even enough to get to level 4, but it was significantly more XP than I would have gotten from just weeding the patches over days. So I'll try to keep planting that. I can't plant until the next cycle for now. Make like another Evil Bob random event. And it is the fishing one. Very cool. It was really significant fishing XP last time, so we'll see. Yeah, wow, we got level 10 fishing from that. Pretty good. Just to the prison random, I think it is, the one where you have to pick locks. And I got an emerald that is on the ground now, so I'm going to try to go bank it and come back to cows. I had a bit of a recording mishap there where I accidentally was recording everything for like 40 minutes. Uh, I don't think you lost anything particularly important. I may have not had commentary on like a level up or something, but just to kind of summarize, we hit uh, 10 fishing, 20 prayer, and I'm just kind of going through the old chunks at the moment. Hey folks, my microphone absolutely shit the bed in this 30 minute clip, so the only way I can kind of deal with it here is to watch the video and try to recreate commentary. Uh, I'm sorry if this is off or my timing isn't great. I can't say I recall exactly what was happening at the time. Uh, I think what I'm doing here though is just reviewing the task list and saying that I'm going at things way out of order. That it was not super great to go and do all of the trees and all of the chunks at once because it made it hard to keep track of you know, which NPCs I had dealt with and not dealt with yet. So I think I'm just saying that in the future I'm going to try to focus on clearing entire chunks even if that involves changing gear or modes along the way. Alright, I got a Quizmaster random event. I was pretty stoked about this. It's a hard choice on the 1,000 gold because that would like double my gold on hand, but I had to take the mystery box in case I got something exciting. Uh, obviously hoping for a mithril scimitar here. Open the box and sure enough, it's a tooth half of key. I'm already giving spoilers because of having to do this, this commentary after the fact, God. Probably not gonna get to use that, but all right, killing an imp, hoping to get a pot of flour, and we got a bucket of water. Bummer. Hit points 34. Here comes strength 38. Getting close to an extra max hit on the dagger. Need 39 for that. Hey, I got a copper ore from killing a man. Really need those. Don't have any way to get copper right now. I have more than enough tin. Prayer 21. I have no idea what this clip is about. I think it's just saying that I finished clearing the lumberage chunk. So I ended by shearing all the sheep. I'm kind of planning out what my next moves are. Oh, and updating the, the gold tracker. Yeah. Probably didn't need to unpause for that. <laughs> Kill another imp here. Come on, big money, let's get a pot of flour, please. It's a red bead, it's not a pot of flour. It's hilarious, like, how many of these beads I've gotten. I have right now uh, the red bead, the black bead, and the yellow bead. And I've had other accounts where I have access to hundreds of imps where it takes me hundreds of imps to get them. Now, I could still be cursed and it might take me forever to get the white bead, so, but Imp Catcher might actually be possible, and uh, if we get lucky, it might be possible once we roll the, the Wizard Tower chunk, which is our roll range at the moment. There's another Imp. Come on, Pot of Flower. Uh, bronze Bolts, okay. Beginner Clue, Shantae Pass. Shantae, you stay. Can't do that one. Kind of bummed about not going in the Lumbered Swamp Cave. You can kind of see the list of tasks on the right there. I mean, granted, I can only do the Cave Goblins and the level 99 um, frogs, giant frogs, but they drop a Mithril Spear. Uh, not a lot I can do about it. I mean, I can dump all of my money on buying a candle, but I don't think it's worth it. I don't think I have to. And by not doing it, I'm denying myself more attempts at loot in the cave anyway, so... I'm just going to wait until I roll a chunk that gives me a light source. 
It's a little bit cheaper than a thousand gold. It's like all of my money right now. Another beginner clue. Drainer Village Market, Fortunato. All right, this might be our first ever one-step casket. Let's go. No whammies. I can just walk over there. It's pretty close. All right, here we go. Fortunato. Come on, casket. That is not a casket. Uh, Alcaride Skirt Shop. I mean, it feels like it's close, but it, like I said earlier, it's not. It's like a 1 in 12 or something. Gotta drop it. I'm really getting bad luck on clue scrolls. Here comes Strength 39, which is an extra max hit with the dagger. Gets us to a max hit of 6, which is a huge upgrade. Um, especially since the dagger is so much faster than that Myth Battle Axe. Coming to fight ham guards early here, I really think I want to start transitioning to the Dark Wizards being my last task. I want to have the highest possible stats for them because they're way more dangerous than these guys. But just about everything is done now, except for these ham guards and the Dark Wizards. Got another ham robe here. That's our second one. Uh, we do need two sets of ham robes for quests associated with these guys. You get a bonus to the, the drop rate on pickpocketing them. Yeah, I've got two of everything, except I need one more cape, one more robe, and I need a total of two of the, the necklaces. So it would be nice to get those. I've struggled to get them before while pickpocketing, and it's going to be hard when I have a limited number of pickpockets per cycle. Now I've got another ham gloves. We've got too many of these. Whatever. Can I sell it? It's worth like 45 gold. I guess that's better than nothing, but not amazing. Just did the frog random event. Uh, it's useless, but I'm going to do the random events. It's so hard for me to get this stuff, I may as well. Alright, that's our last ham guard. So we're done with this junk. It's time to go wrap this up. Just gearing up here for the dark wizards, trying to maximize the magic defense. Not a lot I can do about it. Stopping in North al I didn't actually clear this later, so... Here's Raking XP. This is going to get us to farming level 4, which I don't know if that actually has an unlock or not. I'll check as soon as it dings here. It's nice to have another farming patch. We've got so many now. Farming 4. Oh, Hammerstone Hops. Uh, I have those. I bought some of those seeds earlier. I gotta kill these guards real quick before we do the Dark Wizards. My health's not looking great and I forgot to bring my potatoes. Whoops. Gotta pet the dog. This is the most important task. Oh no, don't shoo away! Oh no, I pet it twice! Oh, okay. Account ruined. I interacted with something twice. It's game over. Uh, there's there's other dogs here, technically, that wander into the chunk, so I could just mark a second dog as, as pet. <laughs> it got denied pets because this one got double pet. Um, that's the most important task. You know, we got this whole, like, roleplay flavor, flavor thing about lighting bonfires and stuff, but we gotta pet the dog crucial non-optional task. See, I'll mark it there. Pet, dog, one, go. I'm just going to gather and eat all of these cabbages just to get a little bit of extra health. Yeah. Alright, time to get wrecked by these dark wizards. Hit points 35 and I died. Uh, I got shredded. I expect them to continue to get shredded here. I'm trying to avoid hopping because... Whenever I hop to the PvP world, it resets the random event timer. I, I need those random events so badly, man. It wastes a ton of run energy to run up here, and it obviously takes a lot of time, but... Yeah, this time I'm going to bring a full inventory of um, potatoes and cook them for some XP here. Getting close to being able to make um, nettle tea, which is going to be not great food, but it'll be good farming or um, cooking XP. Cooking up the potatoes here. There's 15 cooking. I got shredded from full health. I was fighting a level 20 dark wizard and it just it hit me for six, like five times in a row. Uh, having three magic is not great against these guys. Like I, I was able to basically face tank the ham guards and not bring any food and my 30 defense was enough to carry me through that, but they do not care about my defense level if my magic level is that low. I forgot to bring an axe, I'll just walk. It's not that far. 
All right, I got my stuff back, and it looks like I'm high enough level that these guys aren't aggroing me anymore. For some reason, I thought they were level 22, not level 20. But, uh, that's great. <laughs> I don't... Hey, it's strength 40. That doesn't give us a max hit, but it's a nice round number. Probably going to be on strength for a long time here. Got some cosmic runes. I was trying to figure... I was watching this clip, like, what was... Why did I record this? I already picked them up. I need to be better about leaving stuff on the ground when I hit record. Um... Cosmic Runes, very exciting. Hard to get. Uh, I only need a couple because if I can make like just one or two rings of forging, that's that's going to be huge for this account. So very lucky drop to get those Cosmic Runes. I thought I was only going to be able to get them very rarely from the Skeletons and Drainer Suitors, but this is even better. Finished up the Dark Wizards there. We get 13 per cycle now. So it's time to head back to Lumbridge Castle and summarize what's going on. Oh, we have uh, Prayer 22, which I guess is Rapid Heal, but who cares? Okay, uh, I think what we're doing here is summarizing completed tasks. So we can't chop the U in Lumbridge. The other stuff's optional. Can't chop the U in the Ham Hideout. Other stuff's optional. Uh, I'm noticing an issue with the Gold Tracker that I'm fixing real quick. Lumbridge Cellar, can't do it for a long time. Ham Hideout, everything's great. Can't chop the U, can't go in the storm. I get rid of the storeroom task because it's technically covered now, now that it has its own separate section. Can't mine anything in Lumbridge Swamp West. Can't go in the cave because I don't have a light source. Uh, I have that cow pen. It's annoying because Groat's Farm is probably going to be the first chunk I complete, but it's one where I basically don't want to skip anything in it ever. Everything in that chunk is good, and I'm going to want to do it every single round. Maybe some of the trees, but that's... It's not even that many trees. <laughs> uh, North Al Karid, easy chunk. Can't use the fire altar. Takes like two minutes. Ferox South Gate, I still can't steal from guards. I can't get to any of the items. I skipped the nettles, but I figure I get so many nettles from Draenor. It was out of the way and annoying, and I didn't have gloves when I was close to them. Puro Puro, I can't do for a while. I'm not going to bother until I'm Hunter 13. Uh, there's nothing in the dual arena because it sucks. Champions Guild, a lot of this I can't do because it's on the other side of the river Lum, but I did my mining and woodcutting. Can't do the Sourhog Cave. Uh, South Drainer, I can do everything except for thieving related activities. That was a pretty cool chunk. A lot of great stuff there. Got all those seeds from the shop, was nice. And of course, we took out the skeletons and the zombies, but not the rats. Looking at our loot logger, I'm just going to kind of scroll through it slowly here so you can review it personally. Uh, I don't have to look at individual items here because I now have this cool way to summarize all of the new unique items that I got that I didn't have before. So not really uniques, right, but unique to me. New to me. So we got a chisel, uh, some death runes, a bunch of emeralds from random events. I, my seeds should be up there too, but I already moved them. The Iron Med Helm is useful for clues, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, cheese and tomato are a big deal. We get those every day. Barley. The potion, I think, is garbage. Um, grimy Cadentine. Tooth Half of Key. Red Bead. Frog Token. The Nature Runes. And I gotta, I'm gotta. i just going to take that rake and spade out. Because i got to remember to put it back with the Tool Leprechaun. I always forget. And the Cosmic Runes are honestly really exciting. Uh, they're not going to matter for a really long time, but... Just having a couple is potentially a game changer. And our cash stack's looking okay. 1,200 gold. If we unlock a shop in the next chunk, I should be able to afford like a Mithril Scimitar or something similar, air staff. And I can always make some money if I sell like, these bronze square shields and goblin mills and crap. Here's our XP. This was correct this time. We got like 10k strength XP, which isn't bad. 11k woodcutting XP. Also not bad. All of my fishing XP is going to be coming from Evil Bob, sadly. Uh, it's a good thing there's a random event for that, and it's decent XP, because the XP I'm going to get from the two nodes and Draenor is going to be miserably low. There's our total skills, and we're close to 300. Total level 300. It's taken us 37 hours to get here. Oof. Slash yikes. <laughs> Alright, we're at the Chuck Picker. Uh, I don't know if I'm able to reproduce my commentary here. I'll probably jump through it. My point is that I really want the Varrock chunk because there's a ton of stuff in there and I'm noticing that 
Battlestaff store is actually in the same chunk as the rune store, and I thought Battlestaffs were to the side there, so we could both get an air staff and a ton of runes. That's the dream. Alcarid is number two most wanted for all the shops there. Still want chunk nine. Got to get that pot of flour. Not really too many chunks here that I would be mad about, to be honest. You know, I take chunks that involve more mining. Need to get mining and smithing XP for lots of reasons. Guess this chunk above Drainer Village is kind of useless. There's not very much there. So that would kind of suck. I mean, it'd be nice to have the agility course, but I'm going to have to lamp agility for like a year before I'll get to use it. Chunks I really don't want. Um, I guess Mage Training Arena would suck. And I guess chunk number two has like a couple of hill giants, so it would be boring. But I wouldn't be mad, really, if I rolled any of these. Let's see what we get. Okay, uh, so we got the Alcarid Mine. It's got some ore, which is good. Uh, although I don't know if it has anything else other than ore. It has three copper rocks. That's important. This is my first ever source of copper. It's not very much, but it, it'll help me with catching up to my tin stocks from the Champions Guild chunk. Um, can you check if there's any monsters or anything else interesting here? Yeah, unfortunately I can't do anything with most of those rocks. There's a fire rune and a water rune spawn. There's another imp, so that increases our total number of imps and our chances at getting the flower. And nine scorpions, which scorpions technically aren't critters because they have an unsold head drop. Uh, they don't drop things most of the time. And I guess arguably some of those things I classified as critters, like the giant spiders, also sometimes drop glue scrolls, but everything drops glue scrolls, pretty much. Uh, just confirming we don't have any quests we can do right now. And we won't for a while until we get that pot of flour. So yeah, we'll go here next episode. We'll probably knock it out in like five minutes, and then we'll just go back and revisit all the other chunks. Keep trucking through. Thanks, folks. Thanks for dealing with me, Future Marstead, uh, recording this after the fact. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye.